It's time now for a look at the day's papers, and for that I'm joined in the studio by Catherine Bennett. Hello, Catherine. Good morning. Uh, we are starting in Canada with that revelation of hundreds of unmarked graves at a residential school there. Absolutely. So the National Post, the Canadian newspaper, is saying in its headline that it's like a crime scene. So this is the largest discovery of unmarked Indigenous graves in Canada's history. And of course, it comes only weeks after a similar discovery in British Columbia. Now, the paper says that the harrowing discovery is the latest find, but it's also unlikely to be the last. And that's a similar angle that we're seeing um, in the Toronto Star, which is asking the question, how many more? How many Indigenous children's graves remain to be found in Canada? That's the title of that article. Well, it turns out that the Marieville Indian Residential School already has a memorial for eight students who went missing or who died while they were at the school. And so this latest discovery indicates, of course, that hundreds of names will be will need to be added to that memorial. Now, the star in this article actually talks to the anthropology professor, Scott Hamilton. He says that there are many children buried in residential school grounds across the country. And he actually calls looking for these burial sites a daunting, frankly, kind of horrifying challenge. Now, the star goes on to say that this is certainly a reckoning for the country, um, but Hamilton says that many Canadians have no sense of the magnitude of the problem that we're about to embark upon. And if we look also at a local paper, the Saskatoon Star Phoenix, that's, uh, that is a paper in the province where the discovery was made, and they dedicated an article to giving a voice to some of the reactions coming out of the Indigenous community after that discovery. And the article quotes Florence Sparvi, who's a survivor of these residential schools, she said they made us believe that we didn't have souls. Okay, Catherine, let's maybe switch gears a little bit now. You're also looking at the UK papers and their coverage of the coming summer holidays. Absolutely. And they're saying that foreign holidays are on the line. That's what many of the British papers are saying, with some taking a bit of a more combative stance against the EU than others. So the Times of London is saying that the EU is threatening to thwart summer holidays. Now, that's after European leaders said, of course, that they were thinking of adding on more restrictions for travellers coming from the UK as the COVID-19 Delta variant surges in the country. But holiday hopes have been boosted, according to The Guardian. The UK is trying to rescue the summer holiday season, and it's updated its green travel list to include various sunny tourist hotspots, such as Malta, the Balearic Islands, and some Caribbean islands, as you said. But the paper also looks into a rift uh, within the UK government. Some cabinet ministers are saying that these measures are too hasty, and they're actually worried about a squeeze on vaccine supplies, as they think that people could be rushing to get their second dose of the vaccine in order to be able to go on holiday more easily. Now, the Daily Mail, however, is thrilled about these updates to the green travel list, striking a very upbeat tone with its front page this morning, saying... Holiday islands, here we come. The paper says summer getaways have actually been saved thanks to these changes. Well, there's a lot more doom and gloom elsewhere in Europe then, isn't there? That's absolutely right. So if you bring that same story to France, we're seeing quite a different tone. The European press is very much focusing on the rise of the Delta variant in the UK and what that could mean for summer holidays in France and elsewhere in Europe. So you can see here Liberation's rather apocalyptic front page, uh, which says « ça va piquer », which means that's going to hurt. But it's also a bit of a play on words because « piquer » is the verb used for getting jabbed, getting the vaccine. So it's also talking about a lot more people getting vaccinated in France. Now, Liberation is very wary of the rise of the Delta strain, and they're even anticipating a possible fourth wave after the summer. OK, let's move on again, Catherine, but stay in Europe. Uh, you are looking at press coverage of some of the backlash over Hungary's anti-LGBTQ law. Absolutely. So EU leaders are clashing with Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban over this proposed law which would ban references to homose homosexuality or transgender issues in the school curriculum and in media for young people. So essentially the, what the law is doing is putting LGBTQ plus issues in the same basket as paedophilia. Well, unsurprisingly, that's got a huge reaction from EU leaders. The Financial Times reporting that the Netherlands Prime Minister Mark Rutte led the charge against Hungary on Thursday night, saying that the country had no business being in the EU. And the fight is getting personal, as Politico tells us. Luxembourg's Prime Minister Xavier Bettel is gay himself, and so he also confronted Orban on Thursday night. Politico quotes him as saying, My mother hates that I'm gay. I live with that. But now you put this in a law. I respect you, but this is a red line. 
Okay, Catherine, and finally from you, one of the biggest events in French sporting starts tomorrow. What do the papers have to say about that? Absolutely. This is the 2021 Tour de France, which is starting on Saturday, and it begins in Brittany in the west of France. So local paper Le Telegram is saying, voilà le tour, it's looking ahead to the race with its front page today. Now, the first stage starts in Brest, and cyclists will race a hilly route to the town of Londonou. Now, this year, Slovenia is the firm favourite in this year's tour, although, of course, French fans are always hoping for a miracle, and maybe this could be the year for France. Fingers crossed. Okay, Catherine, we'll have to keep it there. Thank you for that. Catherine Bennett with the Press Review.